Welcome back to our series entitled Second String Saints, where we've been looking at some major league messages from some of the, the minor league characters, we might say, uh, in Scripture. And today I want to talk to you about uh, Gideon. Uh, Gideon uh, was a man who uh, became eventually the fifth judge in the book of Judges. If you remember the book of Judges, there was one common theme that happened uh, over and over, or a phrase that was restated over and over through the book of Judges. It was everyone did what was right in their own eyes. And, and when God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt into the promised land, He had given them strict instructions to drive out their enemies from the land because if you don't, you'll end up following their ways morally and religiously and you'll, uh, really God says, you'll be unfaithful to me. God gave them the warning and we need to heed this warning even today. He says, but if you fail to follow my commandments and worship me and me alone, God says, I'm going to lift my hand of protection from you and I'm going to allow your enemies to overthrow you. And that's what we see over and over in the book of Judges. And one of those seasons we find in Judges chapter 6 uh, in the name of a man named Gideon. Uh, their enemies were the Midianites. Let me tell you about the Midianites. They were mighty warriors. They had uh, chariots. They were battle ready. They had spears. They had armor. And what they would do with the children of Israel for seven years, not just seven months, for seven years, they would wait for the children of Israel who were agrarian. They were an agrarian society. They would plant their crops and plow the fields. And when it became time for harvest, the Midianites would watch. And when the children of Israel would harvest their grain, then the Midianites would come in and they would rob and they would steal their grain. And so we see this man named Gideon. Gideon uh, is from a small tribe. He doesn't look significant. And in Judges chapter 6, we find Gideon. And Gideon is sitting here threshing his wheat in a wine press. Why is he doing that? Because he's hiding from the Midianites. He's hiding from his enemy. We see God call Gideon to do something special. Now, I'll tell you, as I think about this passage, and hopefully as we move into this, I think a lot of us hide as well. Uh, we hide from problems. We hide from uh, fixing our marriages or fixing our relationship with our parents or fixing our relationship with our kids or, or maybe it's an addiction or something else. Someone else, something else that is always our enemy and they overpower us. And what we want to do instead of confronting the problem and allowing God uh, through His Spirit, His power to use us uh, to overcome the problem, what we do is we hide from it. And here's what we know. Enemies never go away just because you hide. I'm going to say that again. Enemies never go away just because you hide. So let's go back and look at Gideon. Let me just begin reading in Judges chapter 6, verse 11. It says, Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. Right there. Gideon, he's hiding. He's threshing his wheat in a wine press. Normally you would thresh your wheat up on a mountainside or some high place. So as you thresh the wheat, the wind would blow the chaff and, and the bad part or the, uh, the, the less weighty part of the wheat away and you'd be left with really what you wanted to cook with and, and, and feed your family with. And so instead he's down in a wine press which you would normally crush grapes in, grapes in. And he's doing it for the express purpose of hiding from the Midianites. Essentially, he was hiding from what God had called him to do, which was be a judge, a leader in the land. And, and if you're hiding today from an enemy in your life, an enemy to your family, I want to encourage you, don't be that way, but I also want to encourage you with this. God sees you, and God wants to call you. So stop hiding out, because as long as we hide from our problems, as long as we hide from our struggles, we will never truly see God move in our lives so, we'll, so that we will attain our spiritual potential. Now let's read verse 12. It says, And the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, and the angel said to him, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Did you hear that? The angel shows up to Gideon, who's hiding out from the Midianites, and the first thing he says is, The Lord is with you. Now my guess is Gideon thought, 
anything but that. He thought if the Lord was with us, we wouldn't be hiding from the Midianites for seven years. He says, if the Lord was with me, I wouldn't be here hiding out in my wine press. If the Lord was with me, I would be doing a lot more different things with my life than being right here hiding out just trying to capture some grain. And then notice what the angel of the Lord said. He called him mighty warrior. Now, again, Gideon thought of himself as anything but a mighty warrior. Well, why was that? Well, because he had been defeated by the enemy over and over and over again. And maybe that's where you are. Maybe you feel like, where is God? I, I don't see God in my circumstances. I don't see God in my life. And the last thing you feel like is a mighty warrior. Why is that? Because whatever your problem is, whatever your struggle is, has overwhelmed you over and over again. But I want to encourage you with this thought. God is showing up to you today in whatever your problem is and speaking the same words to you that he spoke to Gideon. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Let's look at verse 14. It says, The Lord turned to him and said, Go into strength, Gideon, that you have. Save Israel out of Midian's hands. Am I not sending you? Now, that question is really a rhetorical question. You could probably turn that last phrase of that verse around and say that the Lord was saying or the angel was saying, Gideon, I'm sending you. It's not an option. I am sending you. The question is, will you go? But I love those words. He says, go in the strength that you have. What is he saying? He's saying, if the Lord is with you, then you already have all the strength that you possibly need. God has given each one of us talents and skills and abilities to do great things for Him, to do and accomplish what He has called us to accomplish. For Gideon, God had called him to go in his strength, to trust God, and listen, to save the Israelites from this horrid enemy, the enemy of the Midianites. And God says, all you have to do is go. Save Israel. Now, I love this, but God says you're not going alone. You're going with me. And whatever problem you're facing in your life, I want you to know this passage right here about Gideon reminds us that God, when He sends us on a mission, He is always going to be present. He is always going to be there for us. Well, then, then how do we overcome our problems in life? How do we overcome our problems in life? Let me give you two thoughts, and we're going to see them right here from Gideon. First of all, you and I, if we're going to overcome our problems in life, if we're going to do something great for God, something that God has called us, the first thing we have to do is we have to discover our spiritual identity. We have to discover our spiritual identity. For you, Gideon needed to hear these words. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. What words do you need to hear from God today? Do you need to hear, uh, you can be a person of faith? Do you need to hear, God can fix your marriage? Do you need to hear, you are forgiven? Man, some of us struggle with our sins and, and, and the things we've done in the past. And maybe you need to hear God say, you are forgiven. I am with you. You can be a mighty warrior. Maybe you need to hear, you can be a great wife. You can be a great husband. You can be a great uh, son or daughter or father or mother. Maybe you need to hear, what are the words that you need to hear today? I want you to know, just couple them with that phrase, the Lord is with you. You are forgiven. The Lord is with you. I will be a great husband or I will be a great wife. So that's the first thought. Discover your spiritual identity. Here's the second thought and the final thought of the day. You then have to determine your activity. You have to determine your activity. Let me tell you what. Gideon could have heard the angel of the Lord say a thousand times, I am with you, mighty warrior. I am with you, mighty warrior. And if he stayed in the wine press, that wouldn't have changed a thing. You and me today, I think all too often, we hear a lot of good sermons. We read a lot of scriptures. We hear a lot of devotions telling us we're forgiven, we're loved, we can be great, we can be a wonderful father or son, or we can be this or we can be that, and we stay in the wine press of our life. Guess what? As long as we stay and hide out from our enemies, we will never be used by God. It always requires spiritual activity. What did Gideon do? He went out, he tested God, and ultimately, he defeated the Midianites. And who was saved? All the Israelites. 
So if you really need to do something for God, determine your spiritual identity. Who am I with God? And then say, I am going to determine now some spiritual activity. I'm going to take step one, two, three, and four. And when you do, I believe that you're going to hear those words that the angel spoke to Gideon. I am with you, and you are a mighty warrior. Take care and God bless. Thank you.